Hello everybody, welcome back. In this video, we shall complete our Giga Pico Nano game that we have been developing. In this process, I'll also illustrate to you the third usage of broadcast, the third, say, main usage of broadcast, right? Now, you'll see that people use broadcast in lots and lots of contexts. Uh, however, as I discussed in an earlier video, there are three main scenarios where broadcast becomes supremely useful, right? So what are those three scenarios? Let's just recall quickly. Number one, action on one sprite causes effect on another sprite, right? So for example, in the first part of the series, we saw that when I clicked Giga, not only Giga, but Pico also moved to a new position. So that was action on Giga causing an effect on Pico, usage number one of broadcast, right? Next, in the second video, I introduced timer and we brought in this concept of timeout, right? So whenever a timeout happened, the same effect happened. Basically, the same effect is that sprites move to a different location, random position on a timeout. So here we have two actions, clicking of Giga or a timeout causing the same effect and hence we use broadcast, right? Now, the third usage really is to control the sequence of events. So what happens first, after some time, what happens and so on, right? So we will illustrate this usage in this video in the process, of course, of completing this game that we have been developing, right? So right now my game is very simple. You know, it's in fact not really a game, I would say, because, you know, I, I just have this and, you know, I click Giga. If I click Giga, both of them go to new position. If I don't, then anyway, there's a timeout that comes in, right? So now let's say I want to gamify this a little bit and I want to start giving some kind of a score here, right? So what can, how can I do that, right? That's kind of standard. We have done this before. So what I'll do is I'll stop this thing. I will create a variable for score, right? So what I'll do is I'll say make a variable and for all sprites call it score, right? So I'll say score and of course in the beginning of the game I should set score to, to zero, right? So I set score to zero and the game starts. Now let's say I say that look my goal is to be clicking on Giga, right? Giga is in this game my hero. Right. So if I click Giga, right, I will get some number of points which are, say, called Giga points. Right. So we did this in, in an earlier game as well. So we will say, let's create a new variable called, make a variable called Giga points. Right. So I'll create a variable called Giga points. And I say, let's say Giga points is perhaps maybe, say, 10 points. Right. So I'm saying that when I click Giga, when I click Giga, please give me. 10 points, right? So let's see what happens here. Uh, how do I enhance this code? So remember, clicking Giga part was right here. This is all Giga code. If touching mouse pointer and mouse down, we were previously broadcasting a position. So now I have to increase the score. How can I do that? Whenever there's a question of changing something, it's always not set, but change, right? So I'm going to say change, not Giga points, but the score by by you know uh, giga points right so the total score is let's say so i say change score because score increases by giga points right? so giga points is 10 i want 10 points to be awarded to me for touching giga every time right now as i previously also did when it comes to this touching events it's always prudent it's always uh, sort of safe to have a small weight so we can try with let's say weight of 0.1 seconds let's see if this works we might have to increase this otherwise right so now what happens is i don't need to show giga points here because that's a little distracting. So I'll remove giga points from this picture. And now when I see if I click giga, I get 10 points. You notice every time I'm clicking giga, I am getting 10 points, right? So I, of course, I have to be quite fast in this to try and score as much as I can by clicking giga, right? Now, you might wonder that, look, clicking giga was great, but can I have a negative point when I click Pico, right? Sure, why not, right? Oops, I should not move this, right? So let me just make sure it's all fine, right? So timeout is working. Moment I click Giga, I get 10 points. This is okay. Now let's say I want to give my Pico a little bit of code to say that, look, if I'm clicking you, right? If I'm clicking you, then I will lose 10 points. Let's say 10 points or whatever number of points, right? So how do I do that? Well, it's not that hard. So in the Pico now, I go and put a code that forever, 
So I have already got this when flag click show. I add some code to this forever, right? Again, go to if, let's say, uh, again, I use the operator. So I like this block if touching mouse pointer, add mouse down. So that makes sure that the Pico is being clicked, right? So first thing, Pico is touching the mouse pointer. And secondly, Pico is, uh, you know, uh, Pico is touching mouse pointer. And secondly, I'm clicking the mouse, right? So I say if, Go here touching mouse pointer and mouse down right so oops this went out let's see so i have to do this carefully if touching mouse pointer and mouse down then what do i do right do i broadcast a take position no because remember broadcast is happening only from giga right only when i click giga i wanted to take new position right not when i click pico uh, i can say look change score by Right, so I can say change score by change is not so I yeah change score by now I can create a new variable and let me do that in Giga so that I can keep it all together. So I create a new variable called pico points, right? So right, so I create a variable called pico point and I say look in the pico code. So first thing I set Pico points when the game starts, I set perhaps Pico points to, uh, you know, maybe Pico points could be, uh, let's say, uh, minus 10, because I don't want Pico, Pico, or maybe minus 5, let's say, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Let's say I say minus 5, and I say, look, change score by, when it comes to touching Pico, I say change score by Pico points. Right now, remember, Pico points is like a penalty to me if I touch Pico. I lose a little bit of uh, score. So again, I put weight of 0 0.1 seconds in this, right? So what happens now is that, uh, let's see if this works, right? So I've got, let's say I click Giga, I get 10 points. All right, very good. If I go and click Pico, right? Notice my points are reducing by five points each time. Every time I click Pico, I'm re I'm losing out five points, right? So, so my game is now incentivized for me to be clicking giga right all the time i want to click giga yeah now with this done right with this done i can add a you know i can add let's say i can add a playing duration right so i want this game to last for say certain amount of time right so i call it always the time left feature right so first thing first i will uh, you know i will go to these variables and hide speaker points so i see only the score now i'm going to add in giga the code for time left right now remember please make a differentiation from the time out to the time left right time out was if giga is not clicked within one second then something happens so that was time out and we use timer for this right time left is how much time have i got in this game to play right so i'm going to create i mean we have done this before so i'm going to create a variable called time left for all the sprites right and you know, I, I can show this here because it's good for me to see how much time is left. And now I say, look, when that flag is clicked, I set time left to, not notice I'm setting time left to 30. Let's say I want to play this for 30 seconds, right? And then my usual stuff, I say, look, let's create another loop. When flag click, repeat, right? So I use a repeat block here. Repeat, how many times? Repeat time left times right so this this works really well repeat say time left times right repeat time left times change time left by minus one so what does that do basically that says if it was 30 it becomes 29 it becomes uh you know uh, let's say i'm sorry 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 minus minus one right and then i can give it a wait one second so every time i basically wait for one second mm -hmm. and change time left by minus one right so this will have an effect of causing you know uh causing let's say the uh the time to decrease in increments of in decrements of one second so it will be 30 29 28 and so on so forth and since i'm repeating it for exactly time left left times which means in this case 30 times this game will last for 30 seconds i mean this time this will go down to zero at the end of this loop when i come out of this loop i am sure that i am at time equals to zero right now the fact that i'm at time equals to zero can be used to trigger some kind of events right so now this is where 
the third usage of broadcast comes in which is to sequence events right so notice all of this was going on now let's say i say time is getting over in my game i'll say time is over but perhaps somebody might want to say that look after 30 seconds i want the game to go to a new level right so i could use broadcast here to sequence events right uh, so i'll say look let's say i'll say uh, at the end of this right at the end of this thing at the end of this time broadcast an event called time left at this event i define remember always broadcast a new message time over let's say time over not time left right so a time over a time up let's say so game is so now this message comes in uh, like i said there are a lot of usages possible here i am just calling a simple one time left right and now i say okay remember broadcast is never complete without the corresponding when i receive right so so far if i leave it at this nothing much will happen basically giga will shout out time up right but people have to respond to it right so what do i do um, i will now say in the giga code i will say when i receive be careful on these notations when i receive time up perhaps i can say giga can maybe hide right let's say because the game is over giga hides right and then maybe i can add a new backdrop let's say you know so i go to backdrops and in the backdrops i just go and so i delete this right now this is very like you know we have done this before so i create a new backdrop and in this say perhaps i write uh say let's say i write a little bit of this thing that time is over right over okay and so oops i don't need to do this i select this and i make the font uh you know a little bit a little bit bigger here so say the font i make it marker and i make it a little bit bigger right time is over let's say i put it here somewhere right so so this is my new backdrop and i all i'm going to say is that in the giga code go hide and perhaps you can switch to space two switch backdrop to space two when i do this remember i must also make sure that i switch backdrop to space in the beginning so i can do this in the when flag click so i say when flag click switch background to space yeah uh, here i switch backdrop to space two and i then say stop everything right now it may look like an overkill to have used broadcast here we could have done all of this here but the i'm trying to illustrate a point here right that i can now sequence things in a certain way right so now when i go to pico right remember pico is doing all of these things suddenly when pico gets this at the end of 30 seconds pico will also get a command that look time is over so i am going to equip my pico to be tuning to this command remember so i say events when i receive say time up right so i'm okay till then i'll go and say please maybe i should also hide right so if i did this then let's see what happens now just to illustrate this whole thing faster i'll make the time left 10 so that in 10 seconds the game gets over and see what happens now right so we have got pico and giga moving around i'm getting points by clicking giga losing points by clicking pico time is going 5 4 3 2 and so on and so forth right time goes zero both of them got this message and both of them disappeared right so uh, this is a very simple way of sequencing events right now one more thing you could have done uh, you know and sometimes you might need to do so is that at the end of setting all these variables you can broadcast a message saying that look game started right and then in that case i can a lot of these can change from when flag click to when game started right so when game starts you take position that is needed sometimes because if you have a lot of variables to set it takes time and sometimes these variables are not set before this starts right so to sequence again we can use a broadcast which is really the third usage of broadcast that is to sequence right so remember we have this code we have used all three uses first uses was first usage was that when i click giga i send a broadcast message and pico takes a new position second usage was that if i time out right again i send a, a you know a, a broadcast take position and everybody goes to a new position so two events causing the same action calls for broadcast third event was to sequence so once the game gets over in this case it's a very simple sequence but you could do more for sure you could do more right now with this done we are almost there you know uh, we have got two sprites 
everything working now i'm going to use my favorite trick called duplicate to create the third sprite right now why did i not do this earlier because i wanted to make sure everything in the game is ready for the duplication to happen right so now i go i right click on the pico i say duplicate it calls pico 2 i'll just say call it nano right uh not nano and i'll go to nano's cost i'll go to this costumes i will first thing i'll add a new costume for nano right uh, so i'll add a costume called nano right so this let's say i just add nano a in this case and i go and delete all these other costumes right so now my nano actually looks like nano and more interestingly all the pico code has come into nano which means nano will also take on a random position nano will also hide when the time is over everything the pico was doing nano will do i must make one change that along with pico points i should define let's say a variable called nano points right so i create a variable called nano points and i don't need to show it here but i can say when the flag is clicked set nano points to to say maybe pico points minus 5 maybe nano points minus 10 right and all i have to do now is to go and change this to nano points and in fact with this little part of the thing my code is fully functional right okay so i've made a very simple mistake here basically i'm hiding giga right so i have to also show giga right so yeah it's i have to basically given that giga is also hidden so i should show giga in the beginning and now my game is ready right so whenever i click giga i get 10 points if i click nano i lose 10 points if i you know if i click pico i use five points so i click giga i can start game and the game gets over everything hides right so in this game we have used broadcast in three different contexts and those are very 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 powerful concepts this will keep coming back to you so please get familiar we will use broadcast in many contexts in future right and it will be broadly in these three categories right so get familiar with all these three and and uh, you know happy scratching Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.